In today's video, we're going to talk about Texel density, how to calculate it, and why it's one of the most important CG skills that even a lot of pro VFX artists don't know that well. Hey, I'm Skylar. I'm a recent character art graduate from Think Tank Training Center, and this is part of a series of tips that I've been making for other students at my school. But if you happen to find your way here by accident, stick around, because this is important for all 3D artists to know. So, Texels. Okay, what the hell even is a Texel? A Texel is a fundamental unit of a texture map known as a texture... Why don't they just call them pixels? It actually has something to do with the rendering process. The render engine does some mathematical calculations to determine where the texels should be rendered to the final pixels of the image, so they're technically different, but I still think we should just call them pixels. And the standard texel density is 256 pixels per meter, which is utterly useless. This is what 256 pixels looks like on a one meter cube. So this could be great for like the original Doom, Minecraft. No, but this probably does come out of old video game pipelines where the output resolution was so low that the size for a one meter object in the scene made sense. But on modern productions, we need to use a different methodology. This might also be why you hear a lot of VFX artists on podcasts and in classes saying, I have coworkers who use like 50 UDIMs when they really only need five. And of course, in a professional setting where things are sent out to a render farm, this isn't a huge deal, even though it does slow down test rendering and visualization. But as students and artists working on our personal projects on our own equipment, it's an important optimization to keep your texel density high enough, but not too high. So you're not overtaxing your hardware with too many UDIM patches and textures. So this is a fast and dirty trick to getting the right texel density for your UV islands that I learned from the legendary Chris Costa, and I'm passing on to you. All right, so when we're talking about texel density, we're talking specifically about the pixels inside a UV island. In film, all of your UV islands should be the same texel density for the entire scene in order to maintain visual fidelity. In games, we have to cheat a little to give the appearance of equal visual fidelity over an entire character or object because we're limited in how many textures we can use in real time. So the easiest way to figure out your minimum necessary texel density is to take the most important object in your scene and then determine how much of the scene it's taking up in pixels when it's closest to the camera. In a film production, your final output resolution might be up to 8K and your asset might have a close up at that resolution. So you would wanna calculate based on that distance and resolution, for example. But for us, let's say we're going to render this at 4K in like a filmic ratio. So I'm gonna do a quick test render as I would when I'm testing my lighting. The sheer audacity. Now from here, we could roughly estimate how much of the render this is taking up and probably get pretty close. But because we have access to it, I'm going to take this into Photoshop and show you another way of doing it. In Photoshop, we have a few options we can use to figure out the pixel dimensions of an area. We can use a shape or we could use a rectangular marquee. I'm going to drag out the marquee and see what it's giving us. So about 1400 pixels. To use this value, we really only need the length of the longest side. We could also try to just calculate this front face if we want, which is probably going to be closer to like 1K. So side note. You might be thinking we need to check the size of these smaller objects because they're further from the camera and you might think, oh, well, they should have less density. And that's not true for our purposes. That's how LODs, like levels of detail, work in games. In a pre-render engine, we want everything the same because they have their own ways of optimizing objects further from the camera. Back in Maya, let's open up the UV workspace 
And at this point, we would want to cut and unfold our UV islands before scaling. But since we're using a basic cube, we already have our UVs ready. And in this example, since our resolution for one face of the cube is about 1K, we know the size for all four sides unfolded should be about 4K. So that's easy enough to scale. It's already scaled for us in this case. But let's say we don't have such a simple shape or we have individual islands, which is probably the scenario that you're going to deal with most often. We want to make sure that we have UV island selection mode enabled, select the main island we want to work with, and then go here to arrange and layout. And we're going to use this measure tool. Measure tells us the size of our UV island at the longest length in pixels for each size of texture map. So as you can see, we have a 1K resolution here at a 4K map size. If we keep this panel open and we scale, then we can recalculate and we can just continue to change this until we get the correct resolution for our chosen map size. And this is about what we had. In most cases, we'll be using 4K maps since that's the current industry standard. And with our accurately scaled UV islands still selected, now we can go under the transform tab. Down here under texel density, We'd want to set our map size, get, and then we can apply this then to all of the other UV islands in our scene. Now we have equal texel density across all of our objects. Then it's on to texturing and rendering again. So it really is that simple. I found that a lot of concepts in CG sound complicated and often are presented in this overly complicated way. But if you can trudge through all the senior tech artist jargon, it's pretty straightforward. So that's it for this video. I hope that helps you create perfect renders with crisp details. Remember that this method is to find your minimum texel density resolution per UV island. So you can and should give yourself a little extra just in case. Okay. Get out there and make something cool. Bye.